Hello world of YouTube and welcome to another recontextualized discography review, the bit where I sit down and put uh, a newer discography review or an updated discography review and put their new albums that they've released since I've done my discography review into the rankings and discuss why I put it over other releases and just put it in context of the band's discography and today Going back to, to a comfort zone, uh, we're covering the, the two new additions to the Ghost series that Nine Inch Nails released earlier this year. I already discussed it in the listening log update, so if you want to hear my thoughts about the albums in general, you can also check uh, the listening log update linked in the description. But uh, I gave them glaring praise. I think that the I like the Ghost series, and I like these releases um, a hell of a lot. I think they're really neat, and I feel like they work even more given Atticus Ross is in the band. But before we get more into specifics, let's just show you where I'd put it in the rankings of the discography. So yeah, it's not the worst thing, but it's definitely uh, not their best. I think that it's better than the other Ghost uh, records for reasons that I kind of talked about in the review. While the Ghost songs in the original four have these just ambiguous titles that are just meant to be these, you know, uh, themeless instrumental passages, the new Ghost albums seemingly try to integrate even more of Trent and Atticus's soundtrack work and to create a cohesive sound across each Ghost record. Um, like Ghost 5, for example, feels a lot more serene but still anxiously driven. There's a use of harmonies or unnerving ambience like on Out in the Open or With Faith. You know, there's still a sense of freedom in its sound. It's just very dark and cold. It has that Nine Inch Nails touch. And it kind of suits the era that we're living in right now of isolation and, and a cold feeling. It suited that, that tone very, very well. And on Locus, they kind of make it a little more propulsive without losing that sense of anxiousness and unnervingness like the cursed clock the opener with that hypnotic piano rhythm that just has this noise that creeps in underneath or run like hell which does something similar but also integrates some of that brass accompaniment that the band has been playing with a lot over the last couple of releases it's fucking awesome and i like it a lot and again i like that nine inch nails is in this era where they're just throwing pianos and horns on top of the industrial sounds and not just um, amplified guitars and stuff. I love that that's just an aesthetic that they're continuing to embrace wholeheartedly and it's something that I've really liked about these two releases. And I sit them above the slip as well in the Quake soundtrack because again, those are fine enough records but I feel like this does more to enhance the sound of the band uh, without pulling away from what uh, may have been the downfall or makes it a little more cohesive of a listening experience than listening to the original Ghost. And I put it below stuff like Year Zero and stuff like that because Year Zero is still a fun-ass, really politically charged, aggro-tinged, you know, traditional Nine Inch Nails record. It's still conceptual, you know, and I really appreciate that. While this has sort of a sonic theme to it almost with a sense of tone, and it, and it affirms that tone really, really well. And they use that sort of soundtrack crafting work to make like a soundtrack for the world uh, in its current state, which I really appreciate. There's just something still very poignant about the writing on Year Zero that just hits way too hard, especially now. You know, as, as the year we live in has gone on, Year Zero feels all the more poignant, which is insane to me. You know, while it was supposed to be a look at Bush's America, it fits even more so under our current administration. And I feel like that's, that's not too, uh, that's, a, that's weird, but it feels also very on base if you look at both of those political candidates. But yeah, I, I love these records. I, I, again, I still like Locust more if only because while I like the very, again, ambient driven, 
uh, sounds and textures and atmospheres, and it reminds me a lot of the Gone Girl soundtrack, a lot of the softer moments on that. I like Locust more just because it does more to me to create a sonic sound for the world at large, and I really appreciate that. You know, if I were to sort of be a lot more stringent, um, I'd put uh, Locusts above together. I might even put Locusts above Year Zero, but if I'm keeping them together because they're part of the Ghost Companionship, I'd put them right here uh, next to, in between the Ghost Records and uh, Year Zero. And I think that that's kind of the point. They're they were both released on the same day. I think they were both meant to be companion records to each other, and they're both, they're supposed to act as like a soundtrack to the cold world inside with Together, Versus the chaotically, you know, continuing, evolving, and negativity outside world. You know, it's supposed to be a reflection of both. And I think that they achieved it very, very well. That's a big reason why I love these projects. Again, in the context of their discography, it's just so good. You know, Trent did covered so much ground already that while this is really, really good, it just doesn't hold up. It's not as good as the other stuff they would do later on in, uh, in their career. And that's, that's it. That's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to put these records in context of their discography. Uh, what did you think about it? What did you think of my thoughts on their records in context of the discography? Uh, do you like them more than that? Let me know in those comments down below. Uh, if you did like this video, be sure to give it a like. If you want to see more of my music, gaming, and general notary content, be sure to subscribe. I post six to seven vids a week, usually around those topics. If you like this video, you'll probably like what I make. If you want to take it a step further and support me on Patreon, you're more than welcome to do that. Special thanks to my patrons. If you do join their ranks, you get early access to content, exclusive content, and you help drive the community. You help me cater videos to the general masses. It's a fun time. I just recently today announced what the redacteds for the rest of the year are going to be. So if you're curious as to what I have planned, big plan, distant plan wise, check out the Patreon. Get access for as, for as cheap as a dollar. Um, but I'm going to get out of here. I have been Viral Rack. You guys have good days, lives, and situations. And I'll see you another day. <laughs>